I am Shilpa and I welcome you all to the NCERT special program on school based assessment. And to discuss this very important topic, in our studio we have Professor Vai Srikanth, who is the principal at Regional Institute of Education in NCERT Mysore. We welcome you, sir, in our today's program. Thank you. So, let us proceed to understand this very significant topic. Sir, today we are discussing about assessment. If today you could just make us understand about how important is assessment in learning. We all are familiar with marks, grades and also performance descriptors. And we should also understand the importance of assessment though there are people who suggest that assessment is not required. That is a very extreme kind of view or opinion. There are also people who say that everything has to be assessed. So, that is also a very extreme level. So, what we are talking about is an assessment which is appropriate to the level of the child, mm -hmm. which has to be considered as an integral part of learning mm -hmm. and it should mainly facilitate in providing feedback to the student. And also, it helps in understanding the strengths of the students in the sense how they are performing, whether their performance has improved or not and whether system is supporting the students or not with mm -hmm. resources which is also equally important and also inform the stakeholders such as parents, teachers, the school and other uh, levels of government whether children are progressing sufficiently or not. Mm -hmm. So, this is the basic purpose of assessment. Right. So, there are different strategies mm -hmm. which we need to uh, understand in terms of assessment. Okay. So, I will explain about all those things in detail. So, sir, the basic question here I will ask is why we do conduct the public examination and NAS and CCE, what exactly is this? We are all familiar with public examinations and uh, many of us are, uh, you know, uh, have been appearing uh, in our educational career at some point of time or the other. Public examinations or uh, year-end examinations as they are known as mm -hmm. outline the performance of the students in terms of summative assessment okay. in the sense what has been transacted over a period of mm -hmm. time such as a uh, during a year mm -hmm. that is assessed at the end of the year and this is mainly to facilitate the students to be certified in the sense after a year's progress, what is the performance of the students in different subject areas. Okay. So, that we will come to know through certification of the mm -hmm. students, which will be used in selection of different streams, especially after grade 10 or grade 12. Okay. So, the main purpose is uh, certification and selection of streams in mm -hmm. case of public examination. Mm -hmm. Whereas, uh, CCE helps in monitoring the progress of the students on a continuous basis. It also covers a spectrum of areas which otherwise is not possible through public examinations. Okay. Since public examinations are only written examinations, everything cannot be assessed thoroughly, systematically. Right. Whereas, a CCE can involve the students and teachers in real life situations on day to day basis it is much more comprehensive, it is ongoing, it provides uh, timely support to the students. So, that way CC is much more much continuous and comprehensive. Mm -hmm. We also have national achievement surveys and also state level achievement surveys. These are largely intended to provide feedback to the system. How system is uh, supporting the students that we will come to know through the conduct of the surveys. So, in this uh, different uh, questionnaires are used, people questionnaire, teacher questionnaire, school questionnaire in order to know how the system is supporting the students mm -hmm. in performance. So, the performance is not simply the outcome of students effort, mm -hmm. it is also the systemic support and intervention, how they are helping the students in overcoming certain issues, mm -hmm. concerns, challenges. So, this is also equally important. So, that way national achievement surveys provide us an opportunity to understand the systemic support. It is not an individual assessment, okay. it is an assessment of the 
system mm. and right. how it is supporting the student. Right. So, sir, you just made us understand about importance of assessment in a very starting of our session. So, if you could just tell us the current development in assessment. The current uh, developments uh, related to assessment uh, mainly focus on uh, assessment as learning. Mm -hmm. Earlier, we used to suggest that you know assessment should be considered as a summative assessment in the sense assessment done at the end of the year right. in order to understand the mm -hmm. performance. Mm -hmm. So, that is why em due emphasis was placed on public examinations. Mm -hmm. Constantly, consistently over a period of time, the shift is to assessment for learning in order to understand how children are progressing, how they can be uh, uh, provided support, mm -hmm. how they can be encouraged and uh, how uh, timely interventions and correction is required in terms of students abilities. Uh -huh. So, that is the focus of formative assessment. So, instead of conducting one shot public examinations at the end of the year, now we are focusing more on providing continuous support across different domains or subject areas. And the third stage is considering assessment and learning as integral part, mm -hmm. so that we do not see them as distinctive entities and we consider that they are the same and uh, especially at primary stage, students should not know that they are being assessed, otherwise they become conscious. Right. If they are uh, not performing in specific subjects and once they are stamped as uh, poor performers, ah. their learning becomes uh, slow further. Right, you know, it is very discouraging for them. So, for that reason, we should consider assessment and learning as integral part, mm -hmm. especially at the lower stages, so that we can provide the feedback simultaneously along with teaching and learning. Okay. So, but why there is a problem in implementation of CCE? CCE as a philosophy and as a formative assessment is very important and conceptually there are no issues. Okay. Only with regard to implementation there were certain concerns mm -hmm. and challenges which was which were raised at different levels. We need to understand about these issues, especially when we said CCE is about continuous and comprehensiveness, uh, people took a continuity in terms of periodic assessment. So, formative assessments and summative assessments and reporting the performance of the uh, formative assessment mm -hmm. in the summative examination report card also led to certain issues. So, the formative assessment is meant to provide feedback to the student rather than uh, facilitate in certification. Mm -hmm. For certification, we have summative examinations and formative for formative we need to do that with a CCE mm -hmm. and in a very continuous and comprehensive manner to facilitate the child. Okay. So, that is one big issue in mm -hmm. the sense it should be considered as feedback to the student rather than considering it as a mechanism through which we will facilitate the children to obtain a certificate. That is not the purpose. Mm -hmm. Secondly, when we talked about CCE, it did not happen in a very comprehensive manner. Okay. S uh, CC, several people uh, thought that CC means activities uh, as a standalone activity in each subject area. Mm -hmm. uh, people were engaging the students and uh, concepts were not related with the activities. So, there were issues with regard to that mm -hmm. and uh, recording and reporting was emphasized. It was a very time consuming activity which took away a large amount of time of the teachers which otherwise should have been used for teaching. Mm -hmm. And it was not considered as a, an important mechanism to provide instantaneous feedback to the students. Okay. So, recording and reporting took priority and as a result of that students did not get feedback on how they are performing, performing and right. how they have to improve etcetera. Mm -hmm. And also, in the name of CCE, uh, people started rating certain learners as slow learners re who require remediation. In fact, separation of students right. in terms of their performance mm -hmm. in a classroom is not all that good. Right. 
so when they are separated when they are given remediation so they uh, feel that uh, they are morally disgraced to learn so what is important is to make them understand better make group learning activity feasible in the school system mm -hmm. and also give different talks so that you know they understand about uh, learning better difficult concepts are focused on so through all these ways uh, the as, uh, learners especially who are not performing in certain specific subjects so their performance can be improved, improved right sir so so uh, i'll just come to the our uh, today's topic of discussion which is school based assessment what exactly is this and how it is different from cce school based assessment is the term which is uh, popular all across the world uh, we know that uh, we have been implementing cce uh, the issue with is with the terminology. The okay. CCE was used largely for reporting the performance of the student, students, mm. uh, formative performance in summative manner. Okay. So now when we say SBA, school based mm. assessment, uh -huh. the locus that is the point where all activities have to be concentrated is a school. Okay. So now when we say that the focus is school, the school and the teachers uh, should involve actively in conducting the assessment. Mm -hmm. It is not for somebody else, it is for the school, the teachers and the students that the assessment feedback should be used. Mm -hmm. Even community can also make use of this assessment. Okay. It need not go beyond that because it is only a formative assessment, it is not summative assessment. Okay. Summative assessment can be monitored at any level, mm -hmm. but formative assessment should be useful for the students and the schools, how the school can support uh, the students' performance. Okay. So that is the focus. Mm -hmm. So when we say school-based assessment, that means to say the schools and teachers should be, should be equipped, uh, should be empowered, should be provided some kind of autonomy in order to engage with the students to improve the performance of the students in different subject areas. Mm -hmm. Because schools and teachers are better positioned to understand the performance of the students right. and they are the people who can improve the performance. Mm -hmm. So there are different uh, techniques and tools which are used in CCE mm -hmm. and the same will be used in school based assessment okay. also. So that way these two are not very different. But by saying that it is school based assessment, we are asserting the fact that it should confine at the school level mm -hmm. rather than being used at different other levels uh, uh, in the administration. Also the main focus is the feedback to the students. I am mm -hmm. repeatedly saying right, this, saying. it is very important that the feedback should go to the students, mm -hmm. not in terms of numericals. Uh, let us say uh, 35, 45, 65, they do not have any meaning as long as students do not understand where they are lagging behind, right. where they are performing better, etc. Mm -hmm. So we have introduced learning outcomes in the system from grade 1 to 8 level and these learning outcomes are the goalposts against which our students performance will have to be assessed. So the school based assessment will help in assessing the performance of the students against these learning mm -hmm. outcomes and uh, even national achievement survey was also conducted in line with the learning outcomes. Uh -huh. Now that feedback is available on uh, sample uh, basis to all the school systems in all the states, they have to effectively utilize this feedback mm -hmm. in order to understand how students are performing. Uh, in different subject areas. Right. So that is the scope. Right. So, so you just told us that uh, SBA tools and techniques are almost similar to CCE. But what exactly, what kind of tools and techniques under SBA? We know that in public examination, we have only written, exa uh, written exams, hmm. written tests, right. nothing else. But whereas in school based assessment uh, and also the ETS while CCE which is also a very popular term. Okay. Uh, we have uh, different strategies mm -hmm. through which we can assess the students. It is very important for us to understand that uh, it is not only the teachers but also students who are capable of assessing themselves. Mm -hmm. 
So, this what we call as self assessment is very important. Okay. The students uh, even in primary level mm -hmm. and at upper primary level they should be encouraged to conduct their own assessment. We can provide them uh, uh, an assessment criteria and ask them to see how they have performed against this criteria. Okay. Supposing an essay is given to the student mm -hmm. and the essay is written in a subject area like language, okay. English or any other vernacular language. So, we need to see how that student is performing in that essay mm -hmm. and he should be given a model essay through which we should be able to say, so how the essay should be written. Okay. how the content has to be organized, mm -hmm. how the language has to be used, how different criteria of assessment should be made available uh -huh. to the students. So, all this uh, 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 can be explained to the students. Once it is done, then student will assess his own essay, his or her own essay against the given model essay. So, that is a kind of self assessment. So, when it is done to the peers, say for example, I assess your essay and you assess my essay. Okay. That is a peer assessment. Okay. So, then it will facilitate in metacognition okay. in the sense we will not only be knowing mm -hmm. how to learn, but also how to monitor the learning. So, that will also be known to the student which is very important. Mm -hmm. So, that is something which is unique about this self, peer and group work assessment. Okay. All these are, are days we have been focusing on individuals. Every child is considered as an individual and not as part of the group. Only in family we have something called as a, a group concept. But otherwise when we come to the school, school right. all students are considered as individuals. Individual. They are not considered as group of children who can learn from each other. So, group activities and group assessment is also very important. It right. provides uh, un an understanding of how each person is able to collaborate mm -hmm. with other, cooperate with other, understand each other and help each other. So, all these aspects are very important. These are related to attitudes, values, interests. So, they are can also be assessed when we are making a group assessment. Right. And apart from that, we also need to give certain authentic tasks. Okay. Mm. So, when you say authentic task, so what exactly is this, sir? Yeah, we do understand that uh, whenever we give uh, situations, okay. tasks, activities, mm -hmm. they are all uh, dummy tasks. Okay. So, even uh, uh, students in higher education, they do dummy projects. They are, they are not real projects. So, what is important is to give some real tasks to the students. Okay. Say for example, a class 5 child, will he or she ab be able to mail to somebody else, maybe mm -hmm. parent or grandparent. So, this is a skill which needs to be ascertained by assessing the students. Okay. First of all, we should make the child understand about the networking, world wide web, understanding the importance of communication and how email should be created and how e mail can be sent mm -hmm. and how the communication should reach the other person and what should be the content of communication uh, and especially with elders and others. So, all these aspects uh, if they are done in this manner, they are real tasks. This will be really useful for the students in mm -hmm. their future mm -hmm. life. So, these are authentic tasks which should be given. Okay. So, now since uh, uh, the posts are hardly used in the sense we do not uh, send letters by post, uh, though it may happen still in several some places, but largely these days we are using email. Right. We can use email, we can ask the child to send a postcard, mm -hmm. we can give a paste, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, student some authentic, authentic task like asking him or her to deposit money in a bank. Okay. So, the procedure that needs to be followed in filling the form and depositing in the counter and receiving the uh, receipt, etc. They are th all this process the child will understand. That means a real life situation. Really real life situations. They are very important. Mm -hmm. And uh, the next important uh, assessment uh, strategy is portfolio assessment. Okay. So, portfolios uh, started with uh, arts and other subject areas have uh, been extensively used these days even in academic subject areas. 
uh, say for example, uh, portfolio in science, so social science, languages, etc. Mm -hmm. So, taking the example of again language, if we want to know the students how they have been performing over a period of time mm -hmm. during the beginning of the year, during the middle of the year, during the end of the year, mm -hmm. we can assess that through portfolio. In the sense, we can ask the students to write essays at different points of time. So, maybe once in every month or once in 15 days, whatever is feasible. There mm -hmm. is, it is not uh, uh, hard and fast that, you know, they should be writing at frequent intervals. Okay. After obtaining sufficient understanding mm -hmm. and knowledge, improving themselves, so this, uh, they can write essay and all these essays can be documented in a portfolio. And uh, the student, this will be a collection of essays okay. and out of this collection, student should be able to identify which are good essays that he or right. she has written mm -hmm. and he should he or she should be able to present on this essay how this essay is better than other essays whether there is a progressive uh, improvement in the performance of the student from the beginning of the year to the end of the year so that can also be seen through uh, assessment of uh, portfolio mm -hmm. so here it is not just simply assessment of uh, the essay mm -hmm. but also the student will understand the importance of collection right. and also identifying what is best again mm -hmm. like what i said it is a metacognition right. identifying best and mm -hmm. presenting it before an audience of students and teachers as to how it should be considered as best and what are the features of this essay and how they are different from other essays, etc. So, this is very unique uh, in terms of you know assessment mm -hmm. and it is integration of teaching, learning and assessment. So, all that happens in the sense you know when portfolio assessment is conducted. Right. So, apart from that there are different tools and techniques which have to be extensively used in, dif in uh, at a different stages of uh, school uh -huh. education in different subject areas in an integrated manner, so they are uh, available these days. Right. So, say for example, checklists in the sense of presence or absence of certain aspects mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of learning and also rating scales, okay. how students consider something are as important and not other things. So, how th th uh, students consider themselves as good at some things and not others. So, that uh, kind of rating scales uh, can be used in understanding their performance and also observation. Observation is a very important technique and observation schedule um, as a tool mm -hmm. should be extensively used at primary level. Uh -huh. So, children need to be observed in order to understand whether they have any learning uh, issues or concerns. Say for example, a child may have a hearing problem. So, the teacher should observe and uh, report it to the parents and uh, uh, the school so that uh, th these kinds of things are monitored at the very early stages mm -hmm. at them. And also uh, very importantly, I do not uh, say that uh, written tests are unimportant. Written tests are important, they are also part of the assessment, but uh, so far we have been giving them very undue emphasis. Right. So now apart from written tests, we have to focus on all these aspects of assessment mm -hmm. and there are still much more tools and techniques available okay. which have to be extensively used. Okay. So, sir, I just come to the rep uh, record and reporting. How important is recording and reporting in assessment? Recording is recording the performance right. of the student right. in the sense how the student is performing. Uh, especially when it comes to formative assessment, we all understand that all formative assessment need not be re recorded. Okay. Some things have to be informed to the students then and there itself, so that students can improve. Right. So, if something is consistently happening, then that has to be recorded. So, otherwise student feedback uh, can be informal or formal and also it can be recorded or need not be recorded okay. all the time. Mm -hmm. And also that uh, we have been uh, recording the scores and reporting as a summative scores which should not happen. Mm -hmm. Say for example, recording the formative assessment of, formative assessment of the students 
uh, in the form of FAs and SAs and then uh, reporting it as part of certification process is not required okay. because the formative and summative have two different purposes and objectives. Mm -hmm. So, they should be separated and uh, uh, especially the cumulative scores should not be given okay. because it does not help the students. Mm -hmm. Say for example, uh, the performance in science is different from the performance in languages. Right. So, when we give cumulative score of science and languages, uh, it does not result in providing appropriate feedback to the student. Right. So, what is important is specific feedback in specific subject area so that the student can improve. Mm -hmm. So, recording even if it happens occasionally, it should not lead to cumulative scores and this cumulative score should not uh, determine uh, uh, their performance right. especially during formative assessment that is very important. And uh, some kind of assessment, formative assessment such as anecdotal reports, okay. they are very important. Mm -hmm. There will be certain anecdotal requ reports required. Say for example, uh, uh, performance related to cognitive areas, affective areas or psychomotive areas okay. can be recorded in student diaries mm -hmm. or teacher diaries or as part of portfolio assessment, uh, they can be kept. Uh, avail and made available to anybody, mm -hmm. so that uh, uh, maybe to the next level of teachers in order to understand how student has performed and what is the kind of uh, report that uh, the teacher mm -hmm. uh, who is teaching the current level wants to pass it on to the teacher in the next level. Mm -hmm. So, that is also very important. Right. So, some kind of evidences in support of their performance is required. But largely the feedback should reach the student, Students, right. then only formative assessment or CCE or school based assessment will be very successful. Right. So, it can be reported only at the end of the year in the form of summative assessment. The formative assessment need not be reported to the parents. Right. Formative assessment is essentially for the teachers uh, to improve themselves mm -hmm. in terms of teaching strategies and uh, for the school to provide certain kinds of resources mm -hmm. if they are not available and for the students to understand their strengths and be nurtured accordingly. Okay. So, that is the purpose of uh, recording and reporting and uh, maybe perhaps we have mistaken all these uh, recording and reporting procedures right. and have done extensive recording and reporting mm -hmm. which sometimes goes unutilized. Right. That is also a major issue. So, I will just come to the teachers. Do you think teachers will be able to handle SPA that is the school based assessment? Yes, uh, teachers can certainly handle mm -hmm. if we are not overloading them with the recording and reporting procedures like I said before. And if we do not make mandatory that this many number of assessments have to be given in each year. Say okay. for example, if we say that a project work, then it is not necessary that a, I mean we need to give two or three or four projects in a year. Mm -hmm. Even if the child understands the importance of how to do a project, whether it is a collaborative project or individual project, mm -hmm. what are different stages in project preparation and a, how a project is going to be assessed and how a presentation has to be made on a project. Mm -hmm. If all these things are understood by the teacher uh, students, so even one project is sufficient in a year. Right. So, it is not the number, it is the quality, quality of kind of teaching and learning that has to happen and that needs to be assessed. Uh -huh. And we have qualified teachers who are very enthusiastic, only the thing is that they need thorough and understanding and they need to be given support and uh, they should not be overburdened with the right. assessment because they also have to teach, spend large chunk of time for teaching uh -huh. and use uh, some time for assessment on an ongoing basis. Mm -hmm. So, that is also very important. Right. And also teachers need to learn from each other. So, then only they will be able to handle. Right. So, we understand that uh, a teacher in physics or a teacher in science 
need not be in touch with the teacher in language or social science. It is not necessary. Mm -hmm. We need to sit together, discuss about uh, the kind of teaching that has to happen in the schools, uh -huh. prepare joint projects and assessment strategies which are useful for the students. So that way their burden will be reduced and they can provide more time for teaching and learning. So, so what kind of preparations is required to implement SBA uh, particularly for in context of teachers? First of all, they need to understand uh, the concepts especially how the SBA has to be conducted at the school level mm -hmm. and uh, they will be given sufficient exemplary material in the programs that are going to be conducted by NCRT in mm -hmm. all the states and they should also be developing certain contextualized uh, material uh, based on this exemplary, ma exemplary material mm -hmm. uh, and if this is done then they will be able to generate resources at the school level. Okay. So first of all uh, they should understand that they are not uh, used as disseminators of certain ideas, they are used as people who can generate ideas and develop certain exemplary material which will be extensively used. So they have to work collaboratively like I said before okay. al along with other teachers. They should involve the students. In fact, students involvement is very important and basic. If students get involved in assessment, the teachers burden will be reduced, reduced. and uh, they can use these teachers mm -hmm. especially the peer support. A, a student of class 5 can re receive the support of a student of class 8 uh, in, in the form of peer mm -hmm. assessment or peer teaching learning etc. So through this way we can reduce their burden, equip them to think and reflect which is also very important because of the workload this is not happening right now. They are certainly capable and also they also need to take community support, community mm -hmm. involvement and active engagement is very essential. So what we require is constant interaction with the parent teacher associations and also uh, the monitoring groups and uh, management committees etc. And uh, uh, also they can take the support of the people who are available and who can extend support in a voluntary manner. So through all these kinds of support, they can engage the uh, community in providing support to the students so mm -hmm. that they can perform better. Right. So, so do you think that uh, these efforts will actually help to improve the scores in examination? Uh, certainly they will lead to improvement but that is not the primary objective. In the sense, uh, w there are expectations that uh, you know CCE, if it is conducted, Will it really lead to improvement in the student's performance? Mm -hmm. Yes, certainly. We all understand and research all over the world says that when students are given immediate and instantaneous feedback in a descriptive manner, it helps better compared to giving feedback at the end of the mm -hmm. year after all the things are learnt and they are not in a position to correct themselves. Right. So it is very important. Uh, that you know the feedback should be given immediately and in an ongoing basis. So that is the primary objective right. and we also know that when processes are improved mm -hmm. the outcomes will also be improved. So learning is a continuous process and it has to be improved and learning outcomes certainly we, uh, uh, they will be realized by the students who understand the processes better mm -hmm. and like I said metacognitive skills are very important and they can be developed among the students. So certainly those people who understand all these aspects can perform better, better. and uh, they can perform better uh, in terms of their own understanding and in terms of their applying this knowledge elsewhere which mm -hmm. is also a 21st century skill which is very important. And they will be in a position to communicate when they are presenting on a portfolio or project they are also communicating to the uh, peers and that way uh, their communication skills will also be enhanced which is also very important 21st century skills. Right. And uh, through school based assessment 
we are not just simply focusing on academic achievement we are also focusing on all round all achievement round, right. how children should be assisted in different aspects of learning like i said attitudes values interests all these have to be monitored assessed and uh, feedback has to be given on a timely basis a regular basis mm -hmm. uh, to the students so that they improve uh, and this uh, instantaneous feedback helps in correcting themselves right. because when feedback reaches maybe uh, through FAs after a quarter already that lessons must have been transacted and uh, further in the next quarter different lessons will be transacted. So the student will not come back to the lessons that are already taught. Mm. So feedback is very important and I it is important because it will be given on an instantaneous manner mm. through SBA right. and also like I said, I am repeatedly emphasizing on the fact that metacognition is very important. If, you, if we want to develop autonomy in the learners, so it can only be done through effective school-based assessment because they will be given a responsible role mm -hmm. in terms of their own learning, which right. is very critical. So it reduces the burden of the teachers and it equips them to think and reflect along with the students mm -hmm. in assessing uh, themselves and also understanding how they are improving, right. where they require support, etc. and ultimately realize the learning outcomes. Ultimately the focus is on understanding at each grade level how the students can perform and improve. Right. Today we very well understood what is school based assessment and also we understood the difference between SBA and CCE and various other facets of assessment. Thank you so much sir for sharing such information. Thank you.